with all my being, I wait for you, O God, and in your word I place my hope, and in your word I place my hope. Out of the depths I cry to you, O God, O God, hear my voice. Let your ears be open to the sound of my cries for mercy. With all my being, I wait for you, O God. And in your word, I place my hope. Your call to worship, if you're following along in the bulletin, can be found on your blue sheets. Let us begin with week one. Keep awake, stay alert. The kingdom of God is near. We are God's partners in hope. The days are surely coming when we will fulfill the promise. We are God's partners in hope. A righteous branch will spring up and will bring forth justice. We are God's partners in hope. Stand up, raise your hands. Your redemption is drawing near. We are God's partners in hope. Let us pray. As we light this first Advent candle, the candle of hope, may we be partners in hope, witnesses to the promise that hope is coming. It is being born into the world. Amen. At this time, I invite you to light your first candle. Um, if you have a bulletin, you can also color a flame in on your Advent wreath, your paper Advent wreath, as we sing our Kyrie, Wait for the Lord. And again, um, if you would like to, you can name the things that you are hopeful, you are waiting for, you are hoping for in our chat box. Let us sing. Wait for the Lord whose name is near. Wait for the Lord, be strong, take heart. Wait for the Lord whose name Wait for 
for the Lord, be strong, take heart. The grace of Jesus Christ, the refining fire of the Holy Spirit, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, be with you all. And also, be. let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sin. And keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now, before we get to our scripture readings for today, I have a small children's sermon for you all. We are in Advent, and so it's time to set up our nativity set. David, could you stop screen sharing just for a minute? Then people can see it a little bigger. All right, so I've got my stable here. Let's put together the pieces. All right. Put the roof on too. Let's see. All right. See our lovely stable? I'm going to put it over here by the advent wreath. Now Christmas is still a long ways away. So today for our stable, I just have some animals for you. We got a donkey and a cow. Does anyone know what this is? Sheep. I've got one, two, three sheep. All right, now my hands are full. Better make a trip. All right, next I have two goats. All right. All 
Now I just have to show you this stable is already looking pretty full. There's Allison. I don't know if baby Jesus is going to fit in there. We'll have to wait till next week to see what else we can put in there. But Jesus is coming, that's for sure. But we better make a little bit of room for him. All right, Sue Ann, you can take it away with the readings. And Steve, you can, or David, you can share your screen again. Thanks. The reading is from 1 Corinthians, beginning with chapter 1. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give you thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given to you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Word of God, word of life, thanks, thanks be, be to God. God. All right, just a reminder, verse one is life, verse two is hope. Let us sing. <laughs> Okay, David, if you want to stop sharing, that's, oh, wait a minute, we want, um, we need the gospel up, I'm sorry. Today's reading is from Mark, the 13th chapter. Thanks be to God. Okay. But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then we will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, and from the, wind, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branches become tender and put forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you will know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all of these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. 
It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Happy New Year! Okay, before you all think that I've gone completely off my rocker, I do not have my dates mixed up. I know that today is November 29th and not January 1st. Yes, I am just as anxious to put 2020 behind me as the next person, but truly, I am not pushing it. Today is the beginning of a new year. If you were with us last week, when we celebrated the reign of Christ Sunday, you are aware that in the Christian church, the year starts with the first Sunday of Advent, today. Hence, Happy New Year! Now, most of you know that the ELCA or that in the ELCA, we join with Christians around the country using the common lectionary. A common lectionary is a three-year cycle where those who follow it have the same scripture readings. So what this uh, does is it gives the church some unity in the lessons taught. So today, you could go and tune in to Mount Olive down the street and hear the same scriptures. This year we are in year B, Year A follows the book of Matthew, year B the book of Mark, and you guessed it, year C the book of Luke. Our current lectionary has been in use since about 1983. Now, I don't know about you, but I can hardly remember what um, I read from day to day, or from what I read from day to day. And I certainly don't remember a piece of scripture that was read three years ago. So just, before, just because we follow the lectionary doesn't mean that we have to read that specific scripture each week. But we, it, they're there to help us, to help give us appropriate scriptures for any given Sunday in the church year. Unfortunately, the one thing they don't give us is a new sermon. Each time we become pastors and preachers still need to find new insights and interpretations for each passage. This year we're going to work our way through the book of Mark, and I've always wondered, who are the writers of the Bible? How did Mark connect to Jesus? I knew that the books of the New Testament were all written after Jesus had died, had been crucified, died, and had, uh, had risen again, and then ascended it into heaven. But Who's Mark? How did he become the author of a gospel? Now, scholars believe that Mark was a relative of Barnabas, a leader in the early Christian church. And um, Mark's family was believed to have been prominent in the early church, holding large gatherings in their home. Mark was a scribe and went on many trips with Peter and later in life with Paul. And Mark may have personally known Jesus, but that point um, hasn't been firmly established in scholarly circles. What scholars do agree on is that Mark most likely listened very closely to the stories that Paul, Peter, Paul, and others who knew Christ and told of Christ, of Jesus and his ministry. Mark carefully recorded these stories for the early church. The gospel according to Mark is universally recognized as the oldest the first gospel of Jesus, his life, and his teachings. Now, scholars all agree that Matthew and Luke borrowed heavily from the, both the gospel according to Mark and from another ancient document that's uh, simply called Q. Okay, so this is all interesting, but what does it have to do with the first Sunday of Advent? Really? Nothing. Nothing really. Nope. It's just that it's kind of hard to write a sermon about Advent 
when the book of the Bible you're using starts with the baptize, uh, starts with Jesus being baptized by John the Baptist as an adult. Where is the young Virgin Mary? Where is the angel of the Lord coming to announce this blessing? What about Elizabeth, Joseph, all the usual Advent stuff that we are used to hearing about at this time of year? I want the beauty of the feel good story, especially this year. I'm tired of the Debbie Downer stuff. I don't want depressing apocalyptic scripture. Well, I have depressing apocalyptic scripture. This passage from Mark is considered the small apocalypse. The chapter begins with Jesus and his disciples leaving the temple in Jerusalem. The disciples are in awe of the temple's size, beauty, and magnificence. Jesus tells them the temple will be destroyed. Now, there are places in the gospel where Jesus talks about the destruction of the temple as a metaphor for his crucifixion, but not here. Jesus really is talking to his disciples about the temple being destroyed by the Romans, which will take place in 70 CE, or about 40 years after Jesus' death and resurrection. In reading the passage that precedes our gospel reading for the day, it would be easy to come away with a very depressed outlook. After all, this is Jesus' longest single speech in the Gospels, in the entire Bible, and all he talks about is the end of the world. This passage is very obviously not as long as the book of Revelation, which may be why it is called the small apocalypse, but it is certainly not a joyful, uplifting passage as we begin our journey to Bethlehem in the Manger. From verse 24 right through 31, we read of heaven and earth passing away. The only thing that remains is the word of Jesus, or other words of Jesus. Wow, what a wonderful way to start off the season, to end 2020. But, and you know there's always a but. In the following passages, Jesus warns us that no one, not even him, no one, not John, not Peter, James, or Jude, no one knows when God is plans to destroy the world. Jesus tells us to keep watch, to be prepared, to keep awake. Now, it took me a bit of reading and rereading of this passage to get past the destruction, to see where the Advent story comes in. First, I had to remember that Advent is a time of waiting, of preparing for Christ to come here to earth. Now, while I usually equate this waiting period, this Advent, with waiting for the baby Jesus, in Mark, we are waiting, <clears throat> we are waiting for the Son of God to come to us, not as a baby, but as the adult, the Savior, who will bring us to our heavenly home. The second thing I needed to remember is that Jesus has told us he would not come with fanfare and mighty signs. Rather, Jesus will come to us quietly. The master of the house quietly opening the door to see if his servants are awake or asleep. Many of you may not see the joy, the hope, and the thought of the world ending, of the final apocalypse. I admit that at first, it was hard for me to see anything beautiful in 
The sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers of heaven will be shaken. But then I realized what this meant, that I will be going home with Jesus, that there is a life after our earthly existence. Pain, suffering, poof, gone. We will be made whole, all of us, all of creation. Now, I don't want to die yet. I openly admit that I want to live for a long time. I want to see my children fall in love, marry, have children of their own. I want to live long enough to torment my family with and my friends with all the small bits of trivia that I have garnered over the years. I would love to see my 100th birthday. I am waiting for all these wonderful things to happen. Just as we now wait for the advent of Jesus, for the second coming, as we wait to celebrate the gift of or to celebrate the birth of Christ, we also wait for Christ to come to us. That is what today's scripture reading is telling us. Not only are we waiting for Jesus the baby, but we are also waiting for Jesus, our Savior, to return for us. God knows when he is going to be ready, or God knows when he's going to send Jesus back to us. But since we don't know when that will be, we need to be ready. We need to wait. We need to watch. We need to continue to look for Jesus Christ. Are you ready? Am I ready? Will his angels gather me among his elect? I hope so. I pray so. According to Martin Luther, we are justified by faith alone. God calls us his, and all we need to do is believe. Can it really be that easy? There must be more to it than that. There must be some sort of catch. I mean, nobody, nobody gives anything away for free. I must need to prove myself, to prove the depths of my faith. I must need to, to, well, to do something. But what can I do that would in any way equal the gift that God has given me? I can't. What we can do is live in the love of our Father who created us in his image. We can believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior. We can have faith in the Spirit. We can stay awake. We can keep the triune God in our hearts. We can wait for the coming of Jesus again together. Now, we all know that waiting is hard. Sitting in a doctor's office, waiting for test results. Waiting for a professor to grade a paper so we can finally graduate college. Sitting up late on a snowy and icy night, waiting for a loved one to come home. Standing in line for the latest phone or gaming system or whatever. It is all hard. Be patient, we are often told. Well, patience really hasn't been a virtue that many of us have been blessed with. I have it. So how will you wait this Advent? Perhaps you will light the candles on your Advent wreath, or maybe you'll open doors on an Advent calendar, but there is something new that I would like to introduce you to, the Jesse tree. 
how the Jesse tree is different, or how is it just, je, ugh, try to say, how is the Jesse tree different from a traditional Advent calendar? Well, a Jesse tree brings us to the lineage of Jesus from the beginning of the Bible. We don't get chocolates or any trinkets or prizes. We get to read a Bible story, create an ornament, and then hang them up. You can hang the ornaments on a Christmas tree or tape them on your door. There's no right or wrong way to create or hang the ornaments. They are as individual as we are. Now, my daughter Claudia has added the internet link into the chat box if uh, you need, uh, or you can email me at church if you would like to download the Jesse Tree ornaments to color and cut out. I hope that you do try the Jesse tree and perhaps it will become a new Advent tradition for you. Perhaps our waiting will be a little bit easier to bear. By the way, today is the third day of the Jesse tree. If you count the ornaments, you'll see that the first one actually goes on the tree on the 27th of November. So now we wait. Every year, we practice patience and waiting. We are not waiting for Santa to bring us our big present. We're not waiting for the baby Jesus to be placed in the manger and swaddling clothes. We wait for Jesus, our Savior, to show up in our midst. We wait in hope, dear church, this is our Advent. Wait with me. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God. Looks like I forgot to put the hymn of the day in there. Whoops. David, if you stop sharing your screen, I will find it real quick. Diane, you can go ahead and play an intro. I will be right there. Amen. 
We have one addition to our prayer list this morning. Uh, my mom, Amy, was recently diagnosed with lymphoma and has started treatment. So we're praying for you, mom, in your treatment. Let us pray. God of power and might, tear open the heavens and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. We pray for the ministry we share in Christ's name. Open our hearts to your call for justice, peace, and healing. Attune us to the needs of the world as you draw near. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for this planet in need of restoration, for devastated habitats, polluted waters, thawing ice, blazing fires, swelling floods, and long-lasting droughts. Renew the face of the earth and our relationship to it. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all people who care for others in our community and around the world. Fill them with compassion and the power to respond with justice for those who are oppressed. Welcome for those who are excluded and relief for those who suffer. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy, your mercy is great. We pray for people who are in crisis as the seasons change, for those without homes facing severe weather, for those who are unemployed and underemployed, and for those in poverty or facing food insecurity. Relieve their burdens, sustain their bodies, and ease their minds. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We we'll pray for people in our families and congregation within our congregation as well who live with depression, anxiety, chronic pain, addiction, and other invisible illnesses, especially Amy, Luann, John and Marie, Harlan, Ruth Ann, Jim, and Amy, and those we name out loud in the chat box and in our hearts. Ease their suffering and support them when they struggle. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We give thanks for the lives and witnesses of those who have died while waiting for justice, peace, or healing. Those names we know and those names who are known only to you. Sustain all who yearn for the completion of your redeeming work. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. 
Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, I'll invite you to unmute yourself and let us share the peace. Christ's peace be with you always. Also, 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 also with you. God's peace. God's peace, everyone. Peace. Peace be with peace. you. Peace be with you. God's peace. God's peace. All right, back on mute, you go. At this time, we would be passing around or offering a plate. Of course, we can't do that right now. But we are so thankful for all of your faithful support these days. And whatever way works for you, I invite you to um, reflect on your gifts as we listen to an offering. Diane, are you able to unmute yourself? We can't hear you. There we go. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Generous God, you have created all that is, and you provide for us in every season. Bless all that we have offer, all that we offer, that through these gifts, the world will receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is our duty and our delight to give you thanks and praise in countless ways, O God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. For in this meal we are seen and saved by your great sacrifice and love, caught up in the holy promise of heaven, and creation is reconciled to your perfect presence and care. And so, together with all saints and sinners across time and space, we sing with wonder and gratitude for the feast that does not end. In which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. 
he gave thanks and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. It's shed for you and for all people for forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, Mother, God in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. At this time, we will share the meal together. If you are with others, please feed one another. If you are on your own, hear these words of promise for you. The body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Let us eat. So. Oh. Oh. I was thinking that you would just take it. I was just, I was just going to do this way. Oh, don't go that way. I'm giving it to you. Okay. All right. The body of Christ given for you. And the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Blood of Christ shed for you. All right, folks. Thanks for bearing with me with a few quirks with a PowerPoint. Once you think you got this thing figured out, still, still throws wrenches at you. So, but um, announcements for the, the the good of the order. Um, we will continue Advent services at 10 a.m. on Sundays. Other seasonal things to look for. We will do a blue Christmas Zoom service on Wednesday, December 16th at 7.30. Christmas Eve will be also by Zoom at 4.30 on Christmas Eve. And then the Senate is offering a, a worship service on the 27th of December. So um, we will join with everyone else on that. Um, details on that to come. And then on Epiphany, we will do some sort of Christmas play again. So lots of fun things to look forward to this season, even if it's by Zoom. Uh, we are thinking we would like to put some poinsettias up there so you can see them. Um, if you are interested in ordering a poinsettia, uh, I think Josiah put the amounts in the email. You can get a bigger one that has two colors or a smaller one that has just one. Um, and let our, the office know if you're interested in ordering a poinsettia. Um, and we will find a way to get it to you after Christmas Eve. Um, if you are one of those people that writes an annual report, now is the time to do that. We are looking for them. We will be collecting them um, through December 13th. Carl, you're off the hook until the books are closed for the year. So. Um, anything else? Yeah. Aster? Yes. It's Carl. Um, on, uh, on the 25th of the month, I discovered that our PayPal is down. Oh, no. Uh, they detected some unusual activity. 
I don't know. Ethel probably wrote a check for a million dollars and it wouldn't go through or something. But uh, then uh, a day or two later, uh, the whole site was, our whole site was removed. So Doug Harrison is working on restoring that. It may have a different password or something, but uh, as of the 25th, our PayPal is down. All right, well, thanks for that update. And if you're one of our PayPal folks, just hold on. We'll let you know when it's back up and running. Anything else? All right, please stick around if you can afterwards for us uh, breakout rooms and virtual coffee and receive this final blessing. The creator of the stars bless your advent waiting. The long expected savior fill you with love. The unexpected spirit guide your journey now and forever. Amen. We're singing verses one and two of O Come O Come Emmanuel today. One and two. As we wait, watch and wonder. God is with us. Thanks be to God. Stick around after the postlude for virtual coffee hour.